side. The first one is the beginner one. As the rumble kick is one of the shortcut to make a low end, beginners often tend to go for a rumble kick in this genre. And I feel like they actually picked the good samples, like this one. But that doesn't mean that is the right sample for the genre. So in this case, it's a bit too, for example, clean. And then they compensate by having this kind of huge effects chain. To be honest, sounds a bit more technoish in this sense. These are oftentimes like the room compensation. They do it without uh, being aware of it. And they go for the one of the easiest way to make a rumble kick. Easiest way to do, hardest way to control. And they just put a chain like this. Even though this is a single chain, they still do some cheeky things in the low end. So on the rumble side, they, they go for the one of the most popular one. We have a reverb and a huge on amp on top of that. And of course a bit compression for some reasons and of course the LFO tool and just going for the preset. And when you stop the audio you will always hear that long tail of bass, that sound. Take a look. It is just a reverb tail that's the reason why I was telling that it's hard to control because you have to use a big reverb but big reverb comes with a long tail and beginners doesn't know using gate. And then what I often see is they go for the straight tech house style high end because that's one of the easiest ones to make. When it's a high end it's quite simple forward, the volumes are a bit off, getting a 16 hat, sometimes in velocity or modulation, and then off hat. They are not really bound by the uh, genre set, so they go really wild with the sample selection. And together. And of course, on top of that, we get a very splashy clap sound, because those clap sounds are really cool. In this stage, producers tend to completely ignore the FX's, so what we can do is basically pick them and just delete them up. We are not going to need them anyways. And in this part, because the producer is just starting to learn about the paths and chord progression and the music theory, they overuse the chord progressions as well. Meaning that we have a chord progression sounding like this. Progression itself oftentimes consists of triplets and they often go for a preset that is sounding warm and cool in this case. This one is from my own preset pack. And together. And it's a very common thing as well, I still do it. You realize you start the project slowly and then you try to increase the BPM afterwards and suddenly it doesn't sound as good. And at this stage, we definitely need something to make it even bigger. Something that makes everybody excited. What I'm talking about, the lead sound. They tend to use the presets and they tend to pick the sound that not really working for them in this case. So we have this sound here. Cool plex sound, and together. Our track starts to turn into a, like a big compressed sausage. Once this is done, comes the other, the second lead, and the third lead, and fourth lead. I'm not gonna exaggerate it super much. For example, here we see one of the symptoms, that like we added another kind of okay lead sound, but we won't be able to hear it anymore. And this is the part, it starts to boost any things around here to here. Like opening up the cutoff and so on. At this part, because we are not using the returns too much, there are not really much effects for transition needed. Oftentimes we have like a pitch drops or the white noise risers or we have like the white noise drops and so on. Something like this. All these sounds are cool on its own, but when you add up to a track like this, it sounds like... The track was already like full of noises and ambience and effects, and now adding a bad noise just makes it complete mush. Which brings us to the, like, the, the FM stars main of main thing that are used in this genre. There is no space, nothing at all for FM stuff. So they oftentimes go for single plug sounds, like simply sound and maybe another here coming from a pigment the lead sound 
So even though I add, we won't be able to hear anything. Let me play for example here. So we could all together take this off and you wouldn't uh, realize it at all. And the other very typical thing is the structure is very 8 bars, 16 bars oriented. There is no effects risers, there is no really smooth transitions of instruments. You will see that here, for example, the first transition, we are just adding the hats and claps. And suddenly we have boom, new instruments. Again, I'm exaggerating a bit everything, but let's just start the end and listen to what a beginner's track sounds like in this genre. For me, this is a really cute track, like there's good ideas, there are some good sounds, but there are really a lot of fun fundamental things that are missing making track kind of obvious that is something from a beginner producer. The next one will be the pro producer. So in this level, the track itself will sound good and the things that are missing will be more like a clutch things. So when we have done with this track, some of you may be liking this track even more than the Bayer version because the differences will be more subtle and the difference will be lying in the more like a genre specific things. I don't want to do another Rumble low band tutorial as a lot of Bayer tracks actually has this line of rolling sub band. For example, in this case, we have this kick sample coming from my kick sample pack. I will add it somewhere here so you can take a look how it sounds. In this style, it could be a bit more aggressive. So what we see here is like additional isotope trash to make it ever slightly distorted. The main sub and here is having this rolling sub bass. First of all, we have this kind of D and D. So we are on the key of D minor. And here, when they overlap each other, when we add the legato, it will go from D1 to D2 and add this loop sound. So if we take a look at the patch itself, we have a single sine wave, a bit distortion, and on top of that a bit of filter so that we don't get super highs here. And of course a legato and quite a bit of porter, so it will be like whoop sound. So when the kick hits, we are ducking it. To spice things a bit up, we have a bass percussions. And on top of that, we have a nice glue compression and channel EQ. I've talked a bit about this one on my mixing bass tutorial. Here, take a look at that. And what happens that glue is catching up all subs. So decreasing is slightly, but we are compensating with channel EQ. This also helps everything glue together. Even though this is sounding a decent low end, you can immediately feel like it is missing some of the spices. But I see that this is the main problem of the pro producers, that they kind of fail a bit to add this icing on their cake so that they really make that sound a bit pop from the other thousands of tracks out there. But let's continue. Now we had this and we have to go for high end. Very, very typical thing. There's nothing wrong with using shaker samples, but they often use similar shaker samples. For example, is a cashmere sample here. And it's nicely processed as well, right? We have a vocoder giving this kind of nice light sound. And even side change the high end off head. So when off head hits, we slightly duck this one. So off head being this. And on top of that, we have a 16 hats. 
and group process nicely. This is a nice cool high end. What is missing is like crushing these drums a little bit together and making it a bit more distorted. And you can do it in different ways. We will do it by using returns in the final stage. Again, decent low end, decent high end, like a pro producer should be, right? And then we slap a clap on top of that. We make this decent high end with or decent low end and making everything really good and popping out makes the track moving towards the more tech house territory because for example in more like a progressive techno or a bit more like ambient techno you would like to maybe balance a bit differently so that you have more quietness in the middle area but the main idea continues here and it will really make the track deviate from what it should be now producer thinks okay i need a good nice lead sound so that i can carry the track out right like this in this case, I'm using again from my preset pack, a good preset. Again, a decent sound that you have already heard probably many times. And if we add this together. Now this is the time for the pro producers to shine with their music theory knowledge. And this is also super typical is that you always see overdone chord progression. Like there are genres that you really need to have really good and advanced chord progressions like progressive files. But when you are doing this type of stuff, you don't really need to go so advanced chord progressions to avoid this progressive house vibe. We have this nice chord progression. And a nice high layer on top of that. and even tension uh, strings on top of that when we are going, for example, a bit more tension area. Really cool sound. And what is even more tricky is like, because we were building this really kind of aggressive track from the beginning, when we add this one on top of the, what we are building, it will sound good. It will really trick your ear. So let me just on and off this and you will understand what I mean. Without this, guys. Pets. If you're enjoying the video up to now, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. It makes me really happy and helps the channel a ton. But let's continue. Once you take this and take this direction, it's really hard to come back and make uh, this kind of deep the style of Adam Bayer because once we have filled the background a bit with the pad so that we don't have much time for this ambient percussive hits, FM hits. In this stage, I don't know why most of the producers are really scared to go for the FM and they tend to use a lot of just samples and maybe a simple plug sound. And then maybe another sample like this. Creating this dark ambient percussion sound, but this is not really exactly the sound that is used in the genre. The other thing is they're extremely scared of using inserts in their sounds. It's a really good practice and it's 80% of the time I will say using sends a better idea. Uh, but there are other 20% of the time you should be actually using the re uh, inserts to create a used as a, like a part of the sound design itself. And one of the examples is making those ghost percussions. Using them really helps to push those instruments in the background. And in this case, because we didn't do it, producers was a bit forced to use like an aggressive high cut to push them in the background. So when we play together. And of course, this will be concluded by another lead sound. So in this stage also, the producer is a little bit scared going above a certain octaves. Like the lead sounds all have, has to be like mid-heavy. The lead sound sounds like this. The short plucky sound from my mini, mini preset pack. The main problem here is, is this a really cool sound, right? First is a chord progression. Again, we are following like progressing things all the time. Takes away from the idea. And the other problem here, actually, this should be based one octave above, should be a bit brighter so that we don't take too much space in the middle so that we can leave the room for the other elements. But because of this, now we will have a very mid-rich 
track when I play all together. Again, that doesn't mean that this is a bad sounding track. I'm sure you will maybe prefer this one to a Bayer version, but this is not really the genre itself. And we will conclude this one with a percussion groove, adding this kind of drive even more to the track. So this is more or less how pro producers do their tracks. So let's do the start and end, and you can also hear. Again, this is not a bad track, but let's try. And let's take the last step and try to take a look at how the track looks like when it is similar to the ones that Bear makes. So the first thing, the same kick, the same rolling sub bass. But there are two different things that is making up here. The first thing is light rumble layer, I would call it. And on top of that, to make the low end a bit more weighted, because we are going up and down here, there is an additional sub bass here. It is also the D. It's basically compensating this super highs here by adding another low layer on top of that. And of course, adding these percussions to conclude everything. And if we continue with the high end, the first thing that you should see is the shakers are actually made for this track. If I play it. We have this shaker, the same shaker actually. They are slightly different enveloped so that each is a bit different on this case. They don't have to take too much space like that often happens with those shaker loops because they try to be the really good shaker loops and edit a lot of things. But a track like this doesn't need a shaker loop like that. And by completing that we have a 8 hats, not 16, 8 hats. Like this. And on top of that an off hat. So the off hat is slightly resonant. And has really characterized and that makes all high and a bit more unique to the style. And of course we are processing a little bit and I will talk about a bit with the sands. It's really important as well when we put the whole tracks together. So let's try just high and low end for now. Cool. In this case we, we have this layered claps. First we have this nice cool Right clap, and on top of that, we have this kind of analogish clap, but the beginning, the attack is taken away. And they are distorted nicely, so glued, glued up. Really cool. I want to jump into the pads, but in this case, all chord progression is non existent. We have basically a no tension pad sound, sounding like this. Just sustained pad sound. And on top of that, we have a tension when we are going this half break part. 
This one is exactly the same that we had in the pro track as well. Made with serum by utilizing adofunusin and then putting a high pass and putting a bit of noise so that it's really really bright. And then enable reverb together. Again, realize that we are not really taking too much space, especially the attention of the listener, because there's a constant sound. After a few seconds, I'm going to forget about the pad sounds, and I will focus on different things in the track. And this is the point where I straight ahead jump to FM steps. Really important. And let me show you how those are made. I made actually three of them. They are quite easy. Don't be really scared. So the first one I made with Serum. I would suggest starting with kind of triangle sinus wave and then going for maybe something a bit more extreme. But the main idea here is if I play the first the sound itself so you can hear it a bit more. First we have a group. In the group I have this dark reverb really long. But I have a gate on top of that, so I'm getting rid of super long tail, but I want to keep this dark vibe. And hence, there's the reason reverb is in, as an insert, so that I can control these things together. And my high cut is not really that aggressive anymore. First, I am having this FM from B, and the B is the sine wave. And on the B part, it's a very common thing that to having something the alternative waveform. So I can bend. See how this affects the sound? You can use anything here, just try to alter the character of the waveform and see how it alters the timbre. This is like one of the basic things that you would do in the FM synthesizer. And having this two aggressive uh, envelope on top of that, the second envelope goes for the cutoff. And we are having this really resonant filter so that it's open, this aggressive sound comes from there. And then we have the other thing is extreme distortion on it. Will sound without distortion and compression like this. Let me turn these two off or we, we can do it this way. The sound is already there. You can definitely hear the bulk, but when you add distortion and compression, it's like roof, it's really aggressive. And we have another filter after all, so that we apply the same amount up here to get rid of all the super highs. Otherwise it will be like this. <laughs> You don't want that. The same idea again, this time I'm using pigments to show you like you can do in both cases. There are some fun things that you can do in the pigments though, which is in this case I'm using a marimba sample and using a modulator, a sine wave, to modulate this guy, modulating a sample. So kind of same idea, uh, sounds like this. A really unique sound. Envelopes, second one, really aggressive, going to the filter, same idea and that goes into a distortion and into a reverb. Cool, right? And this one is the a bit altered version of the first one, I think, on the second one. I'm just changing a bit the filter aggressiveness, I would say. Yeah. So we have this really kind of FM, very classic. You will hear this like really tons of the time. I play it now. And this is the part where we get our lead sound. We are using very similar sound, but we are containing this sound a bit. So we are not letting the sound taking over the track. This time you see that we are cutting really actually quite a bit. Just this driving style. There's a bit of things that is done with the effects. I will come back to this last point, last point in the composition because now the reverb doesn't make sense. It's a clear, just whole reverb. It should be a bit different. And there are other really clutch things there. We will come back. But together they sound like this. Especially in Eden Bear's track, he really likes to utilize these really high pitch synth sounds. And that's what I went for in this uh, in this track as well. Rather than using chord progression, what I did is just alternate these two notes. It's the same notes as you can see. This is E, this is A as well, but I'm just alternating the bottom note so that it feels like a different note even though it's not. Kind of sound. Okay, what is this? These are actually kind of FM sound. This is like a two sine wave kind of, and this is like a triangle sine wave into a sine wave kind of. So this is kind of a FM sound itself. And they are really high pitched. So they sit almost next to the hi-hats. 
important part is those those sounds without all these effects will be really hard to control in the mix. There are a couple of tricks that you can utilize to make it a bit easier for yourself. The first one, let me play you without effects so that you can hear. They will oftentimes either sound weak and if you volume them up, they will sound like super plucky. Right, we detect. The tricks that I often do myself is like uh, using a clipper or you can just use a limiter as well. Meaning that, look at here, we start to cut off the top of the plug so it sounds like this. You can do it with the envelope in Serum but I feel like this way you get a bit more distorted sound, it sounds slightly different. And we are adding a reverb on top of that, really short one, take a look at this one. Let me solve this. And here is a bit clutch trick here is that we have two chains. The first one is the regular chain. And second with the echo with mid side mode. Put it on 100% side. So this is the only side information, only things that we see here on the side. It gives the sound a bit really, makes it really stereo without really affecting too much the middle information. So like this. It's not too big a difference, but it's there. Then I have a Sudi, because it's a very plucky sound. You could do this manually. I just didn't want to play it around. It just cut the super resonant sound, so smooths out even the sound more. And then another EQ, and I'm saturating even with more. Boosting with highs. And finally saturating the kick. And on top of that, to make the sound a bit more authentic, I had just a simple percussive sound. So we are skipping the same chain, but if I play it, this is really bright percussion sound. Sounds really like this. But I'm using higher notes to get this almost like a bird sound, like do 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 sound. And together. Adenbayer does this quite a bit. It could be also using just modular synthesizer. It could be just using another sample. This could be anything. It's really hard to pinpoint, but sounds like this. See how we can hear everything. We can hear the FM styles. We can hear the other things in it. Everything is super clean. I'm going to switch back to the full project now so that there are really clutch things in the FX side, we have to take a look at them as well. So let's switch to that. One of the most important thing is actually how you use return channel to crush a little bit your drums and get a bit richer sound. So here we have these guys, here we have the drum crush return and without it, it sounds like this. With it. It's kind of a combination of a reverb and distortion. And there's a very common technique, especially want to go for more glued, richer drum sound without really adding too many layers on top of, top of each other. What we are doing is first, let me solve this. First, we are adding a real, really wet reverb. So it's not 100% wet. You still want this clean sound come through, but really, really wet. And on top of that, we are really driving it all the way up. And then side change the kick. So we still want to have the groove on this wet layer. So we have this sound. This really ends up really nicely to the original drum sound. Again. The other thing is of course the shimmer. This really long bright sound. And this is especially important for transitions though, that you have smarter, smoother transition. Cool, right? And there's another clutch trick here is the delay, how we utilize the delay. So this is the part where we make our driving lead sound a bit more interesting without adding too much distortion or adding, adding too much to it or laying too many layers to it. So we have the original sound like this, if you remember. So without the echo layer, it sounds like this. Echo layer does this. So if we go here, first we have echo, 100% of course. On top of that, we have a bit reverb and overdrive. So we are like we did similar into the drum crash, like distorting, blending and distorting it. And 
And other thing here is actually we are side changing into the original lead sound itself because it's not playing all the time. It's playing here, here, and then we have quite a bit of emptiness here. So we, in those emptiness, we bring back the delay sound, and when the original lead sound plays, we are ducking up the uh, delay sound a bit. So it really complements each other rather than like add up to each other. Other things are like really things like room reverb or a bit whole reverb, not really that different in that sense. Let's go for the percussion group. This is just the layers to make the lead sound a bit more interesting. Ah, yeah. oh, the first thing that I, I have to show this one. This is me just saying, ow. Yeah. It's me, I think, saying, yeah, or something like that. I don't even know what I said. Yeah. 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 Okay, let me show you without effects so that you can hear a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then taking the high end and driving it. Yeah, yeah. And adding yeah. a reverb. Yeah. Really cool effect. And this really adds up, especially, let me play in the beginning and see how much this adds up to the ambience. Yeah. And then we have this engine sound that I call it. We have this white noise. But what I did, I'm using LFO and sliding it through to get this kind of more industrial feel out of it. It's like rip, rip, rip sound. Yeah. Opening up the mix. Yeah. Yeah. And here, like I mentioned, in the percussion layer, we have this first, this really quiet kind of shakery sound, but it's like the percussive sound. And I think I'm using this white noise here. I think it should start here, yeah. We make it kind of really organic percussive riser sound instead of just using white noise. And on top of that, we have also some cool ambiences rather than leaving the ambient naked. So the first one is this dark ambience. Again, another thing that may probably you don't see a lot is the reverse sidechain. So what does that mean? So I have to play it with the low end to you so that you can understand a bit. What you often see is that when the kick hits, you duck the other sounds because you want to hear the kick. But in some cases, when the kick hits, let's think about like a big arena. When the kick hits, you hear the sizzle with it because the bass shakes the building. Easiest way to do it, or the, one of the ways to emulate it, is actually taking like a sound, any sound, and Sighting you the kick, but using it in the expand mode. Expand mode me means that like when kick hits, it expands the sound, makes it louder. Sounds like this. So the kick will create a sizzle basically. Take a look. The, the devil is in the detail. So let's do a start then. I will show you around a bit and we can take a look.
yeah that was it i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you learned something and i will catch you in the next one goodbye